welcome to the Neverending Backlog Podcast, your place for short reviews from a gamer with the goal of reducing his backlog. From adventures to sandboxes, join our host as we walk through a collection of unplayed treasures. Now, let's take a look at the featured game of this episode of the Neverending Backlog. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Never Any Backlog Podcast. Today's review is a little bit different than other those that we have played in the past. However, it'll actually be a great starting place for us for a future review slash interview that we are doing with a developer called 890 or 890. Nah, I'm not sure. I think it's 890. It's not a zero. 890. They have a game called 1000 Bit which is a binary programming-like game where you write code to perform options on binary numbers. Needless to say, not something we've played before, but it's fun to try new things, thus the creation of this podcast. Plus, I love chatting with developers, so we'll get to actually interview 89.0. If you haven't listened to our first interviewer with Chris Zukowski and his game Return of the Zombie King, keep wanting to say Skeleton King since I play the Diablo franchise quite a bit, However, I highly recommend checking out that interview episode, simply because he offered us five free games, which have not been claimed yet. <clears throat> Why don't you get on that, people? Chris has also offered terrific advice for new developers and anyone that just wants to just get into it and do it. Very helpful. Terrific interview. Chris is a great guy. Definitely check out that episode. I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Make sure you follow him. I have all the information on my website, in previous Twitter posts, Facebook posts, it's everywhere so definitely check it out you can still claim those free games for uh, one screen platform that's actually my first episode i ever did he actually him and i talked about that a little bit as well so anyways we have a lot of great interviews and reviews on horizon and today we are reviewing the indie developer hacking simulator hacknet so what is it hacknet is an immersive terminal based hacking simulator for pc Dive down a rabbit hole as you follow the instructions of a recently deceased hacker whose death may not have been the accident the media reports. Shame, shame. The genre is indie, simulation, kind of text-based. The release date is 2015. The developer is Team Fractal Alligator. They've also worked on games such as WrestleDunk Sports and other Hacknet games. Publisher was Fellow Traveler. Published games such as The Stillness of the Wind, Think of the Children, and one of my personal favorites, Screen Cheat. If you have never played Screen Cheat yet, do yourself a favor and pick it up, especially if you are a fan of the 90s, early 2000s first-person shooter games that you played on the console on the couch with your friends. Basically, it's a split-screen first-person shooter where all players are invisible, and you have to play the game by cheating by looking at their screens to see where they are to kill them. You can play with bots, but the real joy is multiplayer with your friends, hands down. I will say it right now. I love this game thought process because all my friends thought I was screen cheating. Uh, We also called it screen whoring. Sorry if that offends anybody, but it's called screen whoring back then. And I would play 007 Agent Under Fire and 007 Nightfire on the GameCube, which were by far my favorite game. I loved Agent Under Fire primarily because I had A, The Claw, which was amazing because you could grab onto any surface and just fly across the screen. And you also had a great sniper rifle that I'd use. So I basically, I was so good at this. I would actually like fly with a claw around corners and snipe in the air while I'm flying. I wish I was that talented today in like Call of Duty games. Uh, And I love Nightfire because A, Nightfire had Odd Job, you can unlock, which was smaller than the rest of them. So it's harder to get, they're harder for people to get headshots on you. And you had a hat that was a one shot kill that was also like a tracking hat. If you've never seen the 007 with Odd Job, please watch it. It's amazing. It's the best thing ever. Um, You also had remote control helicopters remote control tanks you had rockets that you could control as well and it was just the best thing ever where you stand across the screen and if you're odd job you throw your hat and you're like and then you'd be like which basically means you died uh it's just so much fun that you do that to your friends and they'd be like oh you cheated you saw my screen it's like no one it's a tracking hat because why wouldn't it be a tracking top hat oh such a great game Um, But yeah, so anyway, Screen Cheat is made by the publisher as well. Um, Definitely check it out. I think you'll probably like it if you like first-person shooter games. So anyway, jumping back into Hacknet, current price is $9.99. According to Is There Any Deal, it was free on Desura. Now let's jump to the actual review. First of all, this game is half a gig. It's tiny, installed fast, and started right up. It supported multiple resolutions, and overall everything worked exactly as it should. 
it did pop up multiple windows, uh, which one of them had a command prompt like window uh, and the visual display where the actual gameplay takes takes play. But it's more of a text based game, like I mentioned. Uh, this made it a little bit tougher with OBS. However, I just decided just to show the main display window as there's more graphic in the end instead of the command prompt. So it does, like I said, it, it's, it's, a very, it's a very realistic simulator in a way, which I thought was pretty cool. Graphics, not many graphics to speak of about here. It's essentially looking at like a DOS screen. You know, there are images and little mini games that you stumble across from time to time. However, they are what you expect from a text-based hacking simulator. But it's still really well done. Audio. Nice background music the entire time. That's how you know it's a game. Uh, but that's about it. You know, there isn't much sound to this game. You can purchase the soundtrack, though, which I like when developers take pride in their soundtracks and offer them as a standalone or bundled purchase. You know, it does show a lot about it. Controls. Big usage of the keyboard on this one. Not surprising. And a little mouse. Mostly you'll be typing commands in a command prompt experience. It uses actually a Unix-based command prompt, um, which is pretty cool. Gameplay. Uh, this is a hacking simulator. You know, it loads up multiple windows on your computer and you feel as though you are actually trying to hack something. Though it may not be entirely clear at first why you are doing it, you know that you are hacking and it'll eventually explain it pretty well. Difficulty. Uh, it's difficult in the sense that you're expected to dig deeper into the rabbit hole with less directions. However, it's not difficult in the sense that you need super quick reflexes or that a PC is trying to beat you or that you're playing online. You know, this is a puzzle difficult type of game. There are 11 achievements total. I haven't earned one yet. And let's jump into actual pros and cons. For pros, it's been a long time since I've had to use the command CD to change directory, which was a nice blast from the past. So if you're in DOS, you'd use CD and whatever the directory was to change the directory. And you use CD dot dot to end the directory. So it was actually pretty cool. I haven't done that, like I said, since DOS or playing old classic vintage games. Um, the tutorial teaches you enough to be dangerous, but doesn't give everything away. Uh, so you will be browsing for a bit, trying to figure out what to do. It's like, hey, you have to go do this, solve this. And you're just like, well, how do I do it? And you're like, maybe you gotta go into some folders. Maybe you gotta run some EXE files. It's pretty cool, actually. It's very intuitive. It's a neat idea for a game. Um, the curious person inside me just wants to keep digging deeper and seeing what I can crack. Uh, it definitely captures the curiosity of the person. For cons, uh, it can certainly be complicated. And if you need someone guiding you step by step and you need clear directions, and this game's not for you, it expects you to kind of go off the rails and figure this out on your own. It's a well-made text-based simulator. However, if you're looking for something with amazing graphics, there are few to none in this game. You know, it's not really what this game's about. And similar to graphics, if you're looking for a crazy adventure excitement, this is essentially a text-based simulator. It's not boring by any way, shape, or form. It's really well done. There are some exciting moments in this game. It's just not the constant in-your-face action of a Call of Duty game. So if you're trying to be like, I want something that's crazy with flashing lights, probably not going to do it for you. So would I recommend this game? If you have ever wanted to feel like a hacker, or if you have ever played on Command Prompt on an older computer and felt like you were so cool when you could use CD dot dot to get out of folders and browse the system through text commands, then this game will make you feel like cooler hands down. It's an immersive simulator that makes you feel like you're actually hacking at that moment. It feels less like a game and more like the potential possibility that you're actually hacking someone's computer under the ploy that it's actually a game. I always worry about that with sometimes these type of games that the developers are actually using what you're doing to actually hack systems and it's all ploy under the calm of a game. Like kind of like those, uh, you remember when they used to say Arma was an army recruiting game or they used to have America's Army game where they was actually recruiting for the army, and the army would take like the top players and recruit to them, um, which I actually think some of that actually turned out to be true. That's why I always think this is like, I'm going to get a note one day because I'm just a, just a cool hacker and hack net. They're going to say like, hey, Zach, you're the best hacker in the world. We need you to hack into whatever. Just just so cool. It'd be so cool if that happened. Please send me a letter, hack net. I would love to do some hacking. I'm not great at this game, but you know, one day I'll get one achievement. But anyway, uh, tangents aside, it's a pretty cool game. Uh, that was my review of Hacknet on Steam. You can get it for $9.99. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the NeverEnding Backlog Podcast. We'll talk soon.